go back to our class today. So last time we were talking about the uh, uh, query with the list data type in MongoDB. So I will continue from there. Uh, so first of all, let me um, yeah, let me prepare the MongoDB first. So let me just go to the open robots VT. So then I prepare and connect. Okay, so I have test database. And last time we created several collections and we inserted some documents here. So let's keep doing it. So actually there is a food collection. And here, yeah, we added the three documents. So if you remember, uh, there, the first document is for Tom. Tom has three uh, fruits and also Jane and Bob. Also, they have three fruits like this. So we added these uh, documents into food collection in MongoDB last time. So I continue from there. Okay, so the next operator, the uh, next uh, next operator that I'm going to talk about is this one, the size uh, operator. So basically, uh, in MongoDB, you may have a, a list data type, and you may want to know the size of the list. Then you can use this size operator. So basically, uh, this operator will be useful when you want to find the document with a certain number of elements in the list. So how to use it? So you can simply specify the field, which is a key. Uh, like this here. So you can specify the field name and then you can use the size operator and you can specify the number here. So let's say that if you want to find a people who has three fruits, in this case, you may design this query like this. So simply uh, the fruit field should be compared. So you specify the fruit field and then you use the size operator and then you simply specify the number three. So that's it. So if you uh, perform this query, then uh, we'll be able to see the research. So for example, in our uh, MongoDB here, so I can go to the test database, open share. And here I can type the database dot food collection. And for query, I use the find the function. And inside the find the function, I specify fruit and size operator and number three and that's it so if i perform this query then here is the research so basically uh, it will show all the documents with the uh, fruit field that has a uh, three elements in it like this so that's the size operator uh, but the problem is that um, when you use the size operator in MongoDB, unfortunately, you cannot use a comparison operator together. So it's possible that you may want to find a document with a, uh, a certain field, which has less than three elements or something like that. So you want to compare. However, you cannot use a comparison operator together. So in that case, what we have to do, uh, one way is that we can keep the size of field in the document. So inside the food document, you can create size of field which contain the number of list, basically, number of elements, basically. So you, that's uh, one way. So whenever you add more elements, you can increase that field. And when the uh, one element is uh, removed from the list, you can decrease the number in the size field. So that's one potential way. And another, uh, the operator you can use is the index. So uh, this is a, yeah, basically uh, you, if you wanna find the documents when the nth element is a certain value. So let's say that you want to find the document with the uh, second field is a certain value, then you can use this index, key.index. So in this case, if we wanna find the document when the second fruit is banana, you can design the query like this. So. Uh, specify db collection food and find the oper uh, find the function and then you follow key that index so the field name is the fruit fruit has a list of fruit that one so second fruit but we put one it's because uh, 
uh, in the program ranges, in the most program ranges, when you have the least data type with a certain value, the first element is uh, on the zero position, and the second element is the first position, and the last element is the second position like this. So in the most uh, of the least data type in the program language, it starts from the value zero. So if you are talking about second fruit, we have to specify one. So fruit dot one should be, oh yeah, you have to put the double quote. Banana, like this. So yeah, basically this is the query which will find the document uh, with the fruit list and the second element is banana, something like that. So if we try this um, in MongoDB, uh, basically it will be like this. So fruit list is second element should be a banana like this. So if I perform this query, and it will return two results as a, uh, two documents as a result. So the first one is for Tom, and the second fruit is banana, and the second uh, result is for Bob. And if you see, the second fruit is a banana like this. So that's the basically list operator, uh, the list, uh, the index operator, which uh, you can compare a value in the certain location inside the list. So that's it. So the next one is a slice operator. So uh, this uh, slice operator, you can use it inside the returning uh, option basically. So if you remember last time when we designed the uh, query, uh, inside the find operation, find the function, we specify the query first, and then we specify the returning keys. So in the returning key part, if we use the slice operator, uh, instead of returning all the elements inside the list, you can only you can choose how many elements to uh, return as a query result. So you can specify that. So if you simply specify, so in the returning here key part. You can specify the field which you want to see in a result of the query. And if you use the slice operator, and if you put the positive number, first that number of elements will be returned as a result. And if you put the negative number like this, then the last, the number of elements you specify will be returned as a result. And if you want to see like a, a middle part of the list, then you can use the slice operator and you can put the list data type and then inside you can put the two number then first number and second number will be used like this so it will skip the first number of elements and then it will show the second number of elements you specify in the splice operator uh, so basically uh, in this example if you simply want to find the first fruit of all the people then you can simply uh, specify like this. So for the query, oh, I select everything. So I put this, so this is the query. And for the returning rule here, I can specify uh, by specify the fruit field first. So I want to see the fruit. And then here I can specify the slice operator. And I can specify number one because I only want to see first fruit as a result. So close the bracket and then close the bracket like this. So this will be basically the returning rules using slice operator. So here basically I can specify yeah, everything first as a query. And for the returning rule, uh, I only want to see the fruit uh, field. And then I can specify the slice operator to make sure that I only want to see the first element in the list, like this. So if I perform the query, here is the result. 
So yeah, three um, documents are returned as a result. But if you look at the fruit list, basically only one, the first fruit is returned. Only first element is included here in the returning results uh, from the query, basically. So that's another operator uh, you can use together with the list uh, field in the MongoDB. Okay, the next one is this. So when you do query on the list field, uh, you can also use the conditional operator. So uh, let's uh, try this first. Let's, uh, uh, so there are three lines of code in the box here on the slide. So these are three lines of code. So let's uh, type this on the MongoDB to make uh, test X collection first so that we can actually try something. So if I type this DB test X dot insert, so basically this will create test X collection in our MongoDB and it will make, it will insert this document with the field X and value five. So I will add two more documents into test X collection. So the second is value 15. The third one is a list of two value, five and 25 like this. So if I perform uh, this, yeah. Then if I click, if I perform this, okay. So three records are added. And if I right click on the local DB and refresh, and if I go back to test database, and if I open collection, then there is test X collection created here. So if I choose view documents, then I see that three documents are added into a test X collection. First one has value five. Second one has a value 15. The last one has a, a list of two elements and uh, those are five and 25 like this. So let's say that uh, when we have this, uh, we try this code here, this query. So basically on field X, we want to find the document uh, we want to find the documents when the field X is value is greater than 10 and less than 20. So basically any, any value greater than 10 and less than 20, we want to find the results, right? So what will be the results if we perform this query in the MongoDB? So first of all, five, is less than 10, right? So this will not be included as a result. That's what we can expect. And the second one is 15, right? So 15 is between 10 and 20. So this will be included in the result. How about the last one? So will this be included in the result? So we can try. So if we try this code, so let me right click on the test database and let me click open share. And here, let me try db.testx.find and specify x should be greater than 10 and it should be less than 20. Okay, and if I perform this query, then two results are actually returned. The first one is what we expected, right? X equal to 15. So 15 is between 10 and 20. So this will this document will be returned as a result. And the next one is this, a list of elements. The first one is five, second one is 25. This is also returned as a result. Why this is happening? It's because of this. So first of all, a number five, oops, okay. First of all, number five, doesn't satisfy this, right? So it doesn't satisfy. However, number 25, oh, oh, sorry, let me explain this, okay? So there are two elements here, right? Five and 25, okay? And there are two conditions here, right? So when you specify this condition, you may think about this. But actually it's different. When there is a, a field, 
with a list of elements like this, it's different. So what this means is this. So this query is mean, meaning is that whether x is uh, greater than 10. So there's this condition. And also the second condition is whether x is less than 20. So for this, this uh, uh, x with a list of two elements, what's going to happen is this. The first element is five, right? Is five bigger than 10? No. Is five less than 20? Yes. So this is okay. So this one is satisfied because of number five. So five is less than 20, right? And the second element is 25. So 25 bigger than 10. Yes, that's correct. So this condition is also satisfied basically because 25 is bigger than 10. So basically this condition, the first condition is satisfied. Second condition is satisfied. So that's why the last one, last document is returned as a correct result. So basically it's a little bit complex. Uh, when you have a list of elements like this, and when you when the field X is a list and you are comparing the each condition, basically each condition is applied to each element. And if at least one element satisfy this result, the MongoDB will think this is correct. So this is correct, this is correct. So uh, this list of documents, the list of five and 25 will be returned as a result. Even though each number does not satisfy both, both uh, condition here. So that's just something you have to be a little bit careful uh, when you have a list data type and when you use conditional operator. So if you want to, uh, if you want to enforce these two conditions for each element in the list, then you can use this LM match operator. So basically, if you use LM match operator, each element in the list will be checked against multiple conditions you specify. So if you want to, uh, if you want to make sure that these documents are not returned as a result of the your query, then you can specify something like this. So basically, you can use the LM match. So basically, for each element, you specify two conditions. So if you do that, then basically, it will check whether each element in the list X will be between 10 and 20. So this condition will be checked for each element. So let me uh, briefly show you how this works. So if we add uh, LM match operator here. And if I perform the query, then you, oops. Is there any typo? I'm not sure. Do, do you see any mistake here?
ici. Ok, I think que, uh, yeah. Ok, so I think que this should work. Yeah, so when I perform this code, uh, basically nothing is returned now. So this is also weird. So why? It's because of this, right? So when we look at the test text the collection, we have three documents. So this doesn't, it, this should not be returned, right? Because it's not between 10 and 20. And also now we understand because we use element, uh, this document will not be returned because five, this, so first element five is not between 10 and 20. So it doesn't say it's five. And the second element, 25, it's also not between 10 and 20. This does not satisfy the condition. So none of the elements uh, satisfy the condition we specify. So this document will not be returned. However, there is a second document. Second document with uh, uh, field X, which has a numerical value 15. This document is also, not, is also not returned, even though 15 is between 10 and 20. So why this is happening? It's because of this. So the reason uh, why this is happening is because we use the LMH now. So if we use this LMH operator, uh, basically each element in the list will be compared. However, when we have a document with X15, uh, this X is not the list, right? It's not the list data type. So when we use LMH, this X will not be compared. So that's why uh, this is not included in the result. So um, then what should we do? So when we have a digital document as above, and how can we correctly retrieve documents with the conditions that X should be bigger than 10 and X should be bigger uh, smaller than 20. So if we want to basically only retrieve this document correctly, how should we do? Then we can uh, use this kind of code. So we have to, first we have to check whether, uh, so we have to think about two possibility, whether X is just number or list, right? So when X is a number, we use what we used before, simply compare whether X is between 10 and 20. And also we have to check whether X is a list. So if X is a list, then we have to use the LMH to compare each element. So for this one, uh, it's a little bit complex, but let me show you what will be the solution of uh, this question. So basically database and test X collection. So we are going to design the query using the find function. So that's the first step. And then the first operator we are going to use is the OR operator. So you we use OR operator and, and we list the condition inside the list data type here. And then first we use the end operator and then we specify this x point zero and then we use exist operator first. So let me yeah write down first and let me explain what this means actually. And then second x I think I, have, I don't have enough space, but
something like this. So basically, yeah, if, um, if I explain this, basically there are two parts here. So the first part here and the second part here. The first part is uh, the situation when x is number and the second function, second part is uh, considering when x is a list basically. So first of all, we have to check whether x is a list or not. So how to how do I check using this one basically? So using this one, I check whether x is a list or not. So I put x point zero, right? So basically, it's the uh, index operator in the list. So I am checking what is the first element of x. So first element of x, if it does not exist, that means it's not a list data type, right? So if uh, x is a list of element, there should be first element. However, if there is a first, when I check what is the first element, and when I use the exist operator, if it is a first, it means that x is a number. Basically, x is not list. And if x is not a list, it will have a number. So I simply use uh, this comparison. So x should be between 10 and 20, like this. And the second part here is uh, the same. I check the first element of x. And if that exists, it means that x is a list because there is first element in the x variable, in the x field. In that case, because x is a list, I use the element match operator to compare each element in the list. So each element should be between 10 and 20 uh, in the list, basically. So that's how I can design uh, this, yeah, this query basically, which will return documents only when x has a value between 10 and 20, like this. So yeah, I will not try this on the MongoDB, but uh, here is the basically the code which will work. So you can try it later uh, by yourself. So basically, yeah, this code utilizes everything yeah, we covered in the uh, yeah, in the MongoDB query uh, related to the list data type, basically. So that's, yeah, uh, basically the solution for that. And the next one, I'm going to talk about the embedded document. So uh, the MongoDB data type, we can utilize many different things. The earlier uh, we talked about list data type and there are multiple operators we can use on the list data type. And sometimes a field in MongoDB may contain embedded document. So that's what we talked about last time. So using the embedded document, we have a two design choice, whether we are going to use embedding approach or whether we are going to use referencing approach. So uh, if you want to design a query, which will search inside embedded document, you can design something like this. So you can specify the field in the main document and for embedded document, you can specify the sub key, basically a field inside embedded document, and you can specify the value. So let's uh, try these two codes to prepare a collection and documents inside our MongoDB first before we uh, before I show you some example. So I open new shell here based on test database. So I simply type these two code. So db.person collection and insert uh, name first is John and last is Do. So basically, uh, yeah, basically this document contains name field and inside name field, we have embedded document with the two fields, first field and the last field, like this. The second document is similar. So inside name field, I have a first, but I also have a middle name, which is Tom. And then last name like this. So I type these two line of code. And if I perform it, uh, let me see. Here. OK, 
Okay, so now it works correctly. So now if I refresh my database, and if I go to test database and go to collection, then there is a person collection. And if I click view documents, I am able to see that there are two documents added inside the person collection. So the first document has a name field. And if I open name field, it's an embedded document. So there is a first field and the last field. First field has a value John, last field has a value Do. So basically the, the person name is John Do. The second document inside the name field, there is an uh, embedded document with the three fields. First, middle, last. So basically the person's name is John Tom Do, like this. So I prepared these two documents here. And I want to find a person whose first name is Joe and last name is Do. Then uh, I may try uh, this code uh, shown here on the slide. So what will happen if I perform that code in the MongoDB? So let's try. So here, if I type db database dot person collection and use the find the function and for name for the first subfield I want to search John and for the last subfield I want to search it to write this so I may design this kind of uh, query here so I want to find any documents whose uh, first name is John and the last name is Do. So if I perform this, only one document will be returned, which has uh, name first John and last Do. So the second document, which has a middle name field, is not returned. So why, do, why does this happen? It's because when you specify something like this, when you specify something like this, uh, basically, MongoDB is going to do pattern matching. What it means is that the entire embedded document should be matched. So basically, when you specify this, the MongoDB will try to find this embedded document. Yeah, so basically, MongoDB is trying to find whether this embedded document is inside the name field. So it will try to find the exact match. However, the second document has a middle name field, right? Which is not inside here in our query. So that's why the second document is not returned as a result. So that's just something you have to be careful when you design a query, uh, which is utilizing uh, embedded document. So how should we do that? The alternative way is this. So instead of uh, specifying sub key, instead of specifying sub key uh, using embedded document format, you can simply use key dot sub key and quotation in the beginning at the end like this. And then you specify the value. Then basically, uh, this operator will try to search, search whether the sub key field has uh, contains uh, this value you specify. So it will not do entire document matching it is simply try to search whether this value is inside uh, this sub key inside your embedded document. So basically, in this case, you can try to design a query something like this. So let's try and see whether this works. So here, instead of this, I can just to find the function and here I can specify the name that first. It should be zone and name that last. It should be do something like this. So if I try this and if I click the uh, play icon, then now it works, right? Two documents are returned. The first document has a name that first is zone, name that last is also. Uh, do. The second document is the same. Name that first has a John. Name that last has a Do value like this. So yeah, so basically, yeah, this is a better approach. Uh, when you try to search over the sub key field inside the embedded document, basically. So the last part, um, let me actually show you this quickly. So let me 
uh, type this code first to prepare some collection and the document first before I show you the uh, next slide. So what I'm going to do is that I'm simply making book collection in our MongoDB and try to add some documents there. So the first two document is a title notes and comments has two elements. The first comment is from name Tom and the rating was five. And the second document is from name Jane and the rating was three. Okay, so that's it. And I wanna add one more book here. The second book title is Free Economics. And the comment is from Jane and rating was 4.5, like this. And it has only one uh, comment, like this. So type this, and if I click the play icon here, uh, basically two records will be added into our uh, book collection. So if I refresh our database and go to test database, go to collection, and there is a, a book collection here. So if I right click and if I check the view documents, and as you see, two documents are added here. The first document, the title is notes. So basically it's the book notes and it received the two comments. So there are two elements inside the list. First element and the second element both have embedded document. Uh, first element, uh, it has a name field, a rating field. So basically Tom, rating is 5.0. The second comment is from Jane, rating was 3.0. So second book, same, title is for economics. It has a, a list of comments, there's only one element, so there's only one comment from Jane with the rating 4.5, like this. So I prepared basically two documents inside this book collection. And what I'm going to do is this. So based on this, now I want to do this task. I want to retrieve uh, documents, basically books, which received the rating higher than four from Jane. So basically both of these books received a rating from Jane, right? So here, uh, Jane gave a rating. Here, Jane gave a rating. For the first book, Jane gave a rating three. Second book, Jane gave a rating 4.5. So basically only the second book will be should be returned as a result because only the second book received the rating higher than four from Jane. So that's what we want to design in this query. Then how we can do? Uh, basically, you can specify the query like this. So, so database, and we are going to perform the query on the book collection. So specify that. And because it's query, we will use a find uh, function. And then what we are going to compare is basically the comments field, right? So the rating is inside the comments field. And comment field contains a list of comments from different people. So uh, we want to find a comment with a rating higher than four uh, from Jane, right? So these two conditions should be matched and compared against each element inside the list. So in this case, we we'll use LM match operator. And what we are going to compare, we are going to compare this, whether it's from Jane, that's the first condition. So whether name is Jane. And the second condition is rating higher than four. So second condition is rating greater than or equal to four like this. So those two conditions. So we finish this uh, with a uh, bracket. And then LMH, we finish with the bracket and the comments, we finish with the bracket. And close the function with the closed parentheses like this. So basically that's it. So that's how we can design uh, the MongoDB query for this exercise. So it's a simple query. So let me uh, try it very quickly. 
on the MongoDB and let's see whether the results are uh, returned correctly. So db dot look dot find function and comment field should be checked with LM match operator name should be Jane and rating should be greater than equal to four like this. If I perform the query, then only one result will be returned. Basically, this one has a comments from Jane when rating is bigger than 4.5, like this. So basically, by doing this, we can retrieve documents which received the rating higher than 4 from Jane, like this. So that's it. So uh, that's basically all the things that I want you to cover last time. So let me finish this part and let's go back to the today's contents. So again, if you have any questions while I'm talking about this, you can always use the Zoom chat box and ask me if you have any questions. So today, actually, yeah, I want to finish the, uh, this part uh, quickly so that we finish all the college today. Uh, let me try it. Okay, so um, yeah, so the first part of uh, today's talk, uh, what I'm going to talk about is basically the update in the MongoDB. So previously we talked about the find function in MongoDB to make a query. And now we are going to talk about the update query. So basically we talked about this part and now we are going to talk about this, the update function in MongoDB. Uh, basically, uh, the query is a process of finding documents that satisfy certain criteria. So uh, we talked about that last time. And this query is actually used in other function too, not just in find the function. Uh, we also use this in the update function and the remove function. So the query is exactly the same as what we covered uh, in the previous part. So uh, in the update function, what you need to do is that you specify query first to make sure that which document you want to update. So you specify that in the query part and then you specify new document in the update part, how you want to update. And the last part is the option, whether you want to update multiple documents or something like that. So in the update in MongoDB, so also we uh, briefly talked about this last time, uh, update has three parts as I just talked about. An example is like this. So in the query part, uh, let's say that in the customer collection, uh, we want to find a document with the name Claudia. Then we specify that query here. And then when we find the document with the name Claudia, we want to add friend uh, field with three elements as a list. Then we can specify this new document here then the Claudia document we find in our collection will be replaced with this new document we specify. And the last part is basically the option, whether we will allow updating multiple documents or whether uh, we will insert this new document if there is no match in our collection. So that's basic format of the update function in MongoDB. Uh, by default, in MongoDB, when you use update, uh, basically the matched document will be replaced by a new document. So this is something important. It will uh, not add a new thing. It will simply replace the matched document into a new document. So you will specify a new document here on the second part in the update function. So uh, we can try this basically. So here is uh, one example. So 
uh, we can simply try what will happen. So in the first, um, yeah, basically, let me close all this first and right click on the test database and let's open share. So the first code is this uh, db.customer collection and I use the insert function to add a new document uh, to test basically. So it has a name field with a cloud and friends field uh, with the two elements. The first is Leo, second is Patrick. So basically this document is uh, uh, representing that customer whose name is Cloud has two friends, Leo and Patrick, something like that. So if I perform this code and refresh and go to test database and go to collection and the customer collection, if I click view documents, then the last one, last document is basically what I just added. So it has a name cloud with a friend list uh, with two elements here, Leo and Patrick like this. So let's just say that we typed the name wrongly. So cloud is a wrong name. So we have to fix this typo. So uh, let's say that this customer's name is not cloud, but Claudia. Then we may use the update function, right? So what we can do is something like this. You may try something like customer.update function and name. Let's find the document with the name cloud, which is uh, not correct first. And in the update part, you will say that I want to update the name into Claudia, something like that. So this will not work as you expect. So if I perform this query, it says it's updated, right? And if I go back to the customer collection, and if I look at the last document, I see that name is updated into Claudia. So that's fine. However, something is different, right? The friend field disappeared. It's because when you use the update function in MongoDB, it does a replacement basically. So in this, in this new document you specify here, there is no friend field. Right, that's why friend field doesn't exist. So basically, uh, the first one it finds the matched document and it replaces the matched document into this new document completely. So that's why friend field is missing here. So that's something you have to be careful in the update function in the MongoDB basically. So how should we update only? Uh, name field correctly then. So that's uh, one of the question, right? So let me add the cloud document again uh, by using, yeah, this one. Okay, so let me perform this query again. And in the customer collection, so I added this cloud document again with the name cloud and friend, Leo and Patrick. So I prepared that and let me talk about this. So another way is this. So this is uh, a little bit more complex way, but uh, basically it, I can write down this code. So what, what this code means is this. I make, a, first of all, I make a variable Claudia. So I make a variable Claudia and inside this variable, I put a result of the query and the query is this. So it's more like a, a programming approach basically. So I'm utilizing JavaScript code uh, to solve this problem. So I define variable Claudia and inside the uh, variable Claudia, I put the result uh, from this query. And the query is that uh, from the customer collection, I, I, I will find the one uh, result and the uh, lure the condition rule is this. Uh, I find the document with the name cloud. So basically the document with a typo in the name will be returned as a result and that document will be stored inside Claudia uh, variable. And then I use the update function just like what I did before. So use the update function and the query I specify name cloud. So I find 
document with the name cloud from the customer collection. And then I replace that match the document into this one. So name, I will change into Claudia. So I will correct it. And then I will keep the French field, uh, which is the same as Claudia.French. So Claudia is basically result of this query, right? So our old document uh, result is saved here. And I use a friend field inside the Claudia variable and put that inside the friend field like this. So um, I will skip trying this in the MongoDB, but you can try it later and this will work. But there is a problem in this code. Basically what we are doing is that we are going to manually set a field like this. So friend field, we have to put manually here, right? So the problem is this, what if the document has a 10 or 100 fields? If you use this programming approach, basically you have to uh, specify each other field, right? So that will take too much time in terms of programming this. So it works, but this is not a good approach. So I just want to show there are multiple different approaches you can take. And another approach you can take is this. So do the same thing basically. You specify variable Claudia and you store the document with the name cloud inside the variable Claudia. So that's the same. And simply you change name into Claudia. So in the variable for a name field, you change this into Claudia. And then you use the update function and find uh, the document with the name cloud from the collection. And then you replace that with the uh, variable Claudia, which we change the name only earlier. If you do this, uh, this will work correctly. And it's, just, it's actually better approach than what I showed earlier, because even though you have a hundred or thousand fields inside the document, uh, you only need to change this part, right? But, the, uh, but this is also not that good approach in terms of uh, speed and performance. Uh, the reason is this, simply to, basically all we want to do is simply fixing the typo here. We want to simply change name into Claudia, right? That's all we want to do. However, in this case, we are performing two, we are basically performing two requests to the database. Here is one request, find a function. So we are performing one request to the MongoDB server. And the second request is the update function. So this is the second request. So to update one uh, typo, we are sending two requests to the MongoDB database. So it's not as efficient, oh, even though it works and it's fine. So better approach is uh, utilizing this uh, modifier. So there is a modifier operator, which is uh, provided from the MongoDB. So using the modifier operator, you can simply update to one field, one specific field uh, by using update function. So um, the syntax is this. You simply use the modifier here, uh, dollar set basically, and you specify the field that you wanna change and you specify the value uh, which you want to change into. So in this example, I already tried this earlier. Uh, and if you want to change a name of a customer from cloud to Claudia, then simply you can specify uh, this in the update function first to find the document with the name cloud. And in the second part, you can simply specify modifier, which is a dollar set and then you can specify field and the value. So I want to change name into Claudia like this. So that's it. So let me try this to see whether it works correctly. So here, let me open new share. And if, here, if I type db.customer collection, update to function and the query part I specify, I want to find document with the name cloud. And here on the second part, I use a set operator 
and I want to change the name into Claudia, like this. And that's it. So if I perform this query, yeah, it says it's updated. And now if I go back to the customer collection, and if I look at the last document, now it has a name, which is changed into Claudia. However, friends, uh, friends field with a list of two elements is still there. So you can see that uh, it works correctly in this case. So basically the main thing is this, there are multiple ways uh, because uh, MongoDB is more like a programming language. There are multiple ways of uh, performing the same thing. However, depending on what you use and how you design, the speed and the performance uh, may be affected. So in this case, using set operator to change one field's data is the best approach because in this case, you only need to send uh, one request to the MongoDB server. So something like this is actually important when you are dealing with a big data application because speed is again uh, very important. So also another thing is this. So when you use the set operator, and if that field doesn't exist in the document, it will create a new document. So you can use the set operator also to add a new field that's also possible. So let's just think about this case. So earlier we have the uh, document, which we changed the name into Claudia. On that document, uh, let's just say that we want to add a phone number of that customer. Then. Uh, we can use a set operator again. So in this case, in, again, in the update function, we specify the query first. So this is a query, which is a finding a document with the name Claudia. And we can add a, a new field, basically. So we can use the set operator here. And we can add a phone number field. And let's say that the phone number might be home phone number, work phone number. So if we want to make a sub field, then we can use a phone.home and add a phone number here, something like this. And also we can add a phone.work like this. So basically, uh, what's going to happen is this. So if you, so when you use the set operator, if you just uh, specify one field, or uh, that field will be added as a uh, um, field in the main document. But if you specify uh, something that field, then basically um, the first one will be the field in the main document, and second field will be added as a subfield in the sub document, in the, in, as an embedded document, basically. So if I perform this query, uh, basically, I'm going to make a home a phone field inside the customer document. And this phone field will be an embedded document with two additional fields, which are home and work. So if I try and see the results, it will be uh, easier to understand this concept basically. So if I type db.customer and update function here, and for the query, I specify name Claudia, and set operator here. And for the first one, I use a phone dot home. And for a second, phone dot work. Okay. And then if I perform this query, yeah, one. Uh, record is updated basically. 
So if I go back to the customer collection and Claudia was, yeah, the first document is also Claudia. So if I look at the first document, uh, basically in this document with the name Claudia, I can see that the phone field is added nearly here. And this phone field has two fields. That means this phone field contains an embedded document. And if we open it, the first field is a home, second field is a work. And it has a value that we specified here like this. So basically that's how you can add field and also sub field by using a set operator in the MongoDB. So that's it. And also, uh, if you have any field inside the document with a number, you can modify that number too. So instead of simply changing the value into something new, you can increase or decrease the value which is already existing inside the field. So how to do that? You can use the ink operator basically. So you can specify the ink operator like this, and you specify the name of the field in the document, and you specify the amount uh, which you want to increase. So the number in that field will be increased by the amount you specify here, basically. So uh, let's try this. So uh, basically the first uh, line of the code here is adding points of field inside the document name, a uh, document with the name field Claudia. So we find the document with the name Claudia and then using the set operator, we are going to make point field and the value will be zero. And then if we want to increase this point to field value by hundred, then we can design this update query. So in the update query, we specify the uh, query first, which is finding the document name Claudia. And then we can specify uh, this update rule with the ink operator and for the point field, I will increase it by 100, like this. So I can try this very quickly here. So basically, let me open the shell here. In the first line of code, I type this to make yeah. So I type this to make uh, the field points inside the Claudia document, and the second line of code here. We basically uh, used to increase the point field by 100. So type this and if I perform the query, so because of the first line of the code, uh, it updated one record and the second line of code, uh, it says zero records is updated, but let me check. Uh, yeah, so I think I have to do it separately. Okay, so let me try this. Oh, so there's typo actually. Okay, so now it works. And if I view customer collection, the first document has a name Claudia and the point is 100 now. Uh, so you can see that this code is working uh, as we expect. So in this amount part, if you simply put the negative number, then the number in the field will be decreased by that amount you specify. So that's how you can utilize incorporator in the MongoDB basically. And there's also this operator. So let's say that you want to remove a certain field from the document, then you can use the onset operator. So let's say that uh, earlier we create the points field inside the 
a customer document whose name is Claudia, and we want to remove that points field from her document. Then in the update function, so we specify query, and in the update rule, we can use this onset operator and you can specify the field name, which is a point. And as a value, you can simply put one. It means that, then it means that it will remove the point field inside a Claudia document. So I skip this, it's very simple. So you can try by yourself. Basically, if you try this, the point field which exists before will be removed from the document. And another operator I will talk about is a push operator. So it's related to the list data type again. So basically a list data type contains a list of elements. And if you want to add a new element inside the list or array, then you can use this push operator in the MongoDB. So let's say that in our customer collection, we have this Claudia document with the name Claudia. Uh, and for Claudia, let's just say that a customer made a comment about the company or something. So we want to add that comment she made inside her document. Then we can use this push operator basically. So it's very simple, something like this. So find a document with the name Claudia and we can use the push operator. And here we specify the field. So we can specify comments field. So if the comments field doesn't exist, it will be newly uh, created basically. And you specify the element you want to put inside comments. So comments is something like this. So this uh, product is lovely or something like that. So she made this comment. Then we want to add this into her uh, comment field in the document. So something like this. And also she makes another comment, then we can create another Then we can add another comment into the comment field basically. So something like this. So if I try this in the MongoDB, basically uh, it will be like this. So first of all, we specify the query finding our name Claudia. And in the update rule, we use the push operator. And on the comment field, we add this comment. And let's just say that she made another comment which is so if i perform these two update function then basically uh, i would expect that there is a comment field created inside the claudia document and there will there should be two elements inside the comment field so if i perform this okay it's updated correctly and go back to the customer collection and if i open the first document with the name claudia I see that there is a comment field created and it says that there are two elements. So if I open first element, this product is lovely. Uh, second element is really nice, basically what I added into a comment field as a list. So you can see that this is performed correctly. So currently, um, here what I showed is that so whenever a new element is added into the list, I did it. Uh, one by one, right? So add to add two new elements into a comment list, I had to send the two requests to the MongoDB server because there are two update function. 
So is there any better way to add multiple elements? And then we can utilize this. So we can utilize this uh, push operator together with uh, each operator basically. So basically uh, each operator will do this. So the syntax is this, you specify the each operator and you specify a list of multiple elements. Then each operator will iterate over multiple elements you specify in the list. So earlier things, if we want to do, uh, do it utilizing only one update function, then you can design it like this. Other things are all the same. So we have to use the update function and we have to find the document with the name Claudia first. And then also we have to use the same push operator because we want to add element into the list. So use the push operator and also specify comments because we want to add element inside the comments field. And here we use each operator to iterate over the list. So use the each operator and specify a list and specify an element here. So this product is lovely and really nice. So basically two comment. Okay, like this. And basically what's going to happen is that this each operator will iterate uh, each element in the list. So first it will perform push into comments with this element. And then it will perform push operator into comments with the second element like this. So by using this, you are able to add multiple uh, things into the list field inside your document. So Again, to save the time, I skip doing this in the MongoDB, but uh, again, you can try uh, by yourself at home on your PC, basically. Okay, so another operator is a slice operator. So slice operator, so if you use this, basically it will keep the most recent elements only. So let's say that uh, you want to have a field inside your MongoDB document, uh, which contain um, top 10 recent activity or something like that. So we use that kind of a field quite a lot and quite often in the real world. Uh, so when you go to a certain person's profile, we don't want to show all the activity. Usually we want to show top 10 recent activity or top 10 recent friends or something like that. Then uh, slice operator is something you may utilize actually. So slice operator will keep the most recent elements only. So you can specify a number of elements you want to keep in the list with a uh, negative sign basically. So in this case, uh, this customer is making a lot of comments. So customer is keep adding comments into the uh, service. And let's say that we only want to keep the recent three comments the client made or customer made. Then we can use the slice operator. So basically something like this. When customer, let's say that this customer made a new comment, then we we'll use the push operator, like what we did earlier to add this new comment into the comments field. So using the push operator, we'll add the comments into the comments field. And if she made multiple comments, we'll use each operator again and add this, right? So the same comment. Okay, and then here you can specify the slice operator. So I specify the slice operator and I specify the number, let's just say minus three. Then it will keep only three 
uh, recently added elements in the list and other old elements, it will be removed from the list. And then, yeah, close, close like this. So let's test this uh, really quickly. So here, uh, to check whether uh, this is working correctly, let me make a little bit change. So same update function, and the query is a name, Claudia. And for the update part, I use the push operator and add it into the comment field. And I use the each operator to iterate multiple elements. So to understand it correctly, so sorry to comment. Uh, force comment. So I write something like this. So that this latest comment should be left uh, in the in the list basically. So I keep only the latest three comments which we add into the list. Okay, like this. So I type this and if I perform the query, yeah, it said uh, one record is updated. So if I go to the customer collection and if I look at the first one, uh, basically now you can see that even though we added the multiple comments and there were multiple comments already inside the comments field, now comments field has only uh, three elements. And if I open it, it's the latest element basically we added into the comment list. So really nice, third comment, first comment, which we added uh, just now like this. So basically that's how you can utilize slice operator. Okay, so there are some exercises here. So uh, basically, yeah, so let, uh, again, to save the time, let me just show the solution so that you can uh, try it by yourself. So what I did here is this. Uh, basically, I am preparing database with the three documents here, so like this. So I create the employee collection and each document contains information about the employee who visited a different country. So Tom, so first document is about Tom, Second is Jane, third is Bob. So first document, whose name is Tom, he visited the US and Japan. Uh, Jane visited Korea, Hong Kong. Uh, Bob visited Singapore, something like that. So let's assume that all the employees recently visited Hong Kong for a business trip. Uh, and the company wants to add Hong Kong in, into the visited list uh, for all employees. Then uh, how we can design that query. So this one we can uh, first, uh, think about this, right? So we want to basically add Hong Kong into the list. However, for Jane, Jane already visited Hong Kong. So for Jane, we don't need to add it, right? Because she already visited. So that's the thing we have to consider. Then to uh, make this query work, uh, we can design something like this. We specify DB and the collection we want to update, which is employee. And for this question, we have to use the update function because we are going to add new information into the pre-existing document. And then we specify uh, inside here. So inside the update function, the first part is a query. So which document we want to update? So we have to specify that. We are not going to update everything. We are going to only update when visited the field doesn't include Hong Kong, right? Something like this. So we specify that query first so that uh, in case of Jane, Jane already has a Hong Kong field, a Hong Kong data inside the visited field. So we want to, we don't need to update the uh, change document in this case. So we specify that. And if Hong Kong data is not inserted into the visited field in the visited list, 
then we are going to use the push operator to add the new information into the visited field. And the new information we want to add is uh, Hong Kong, basically. And then last part for the option, we have to use multi-option because we want to uh, update multiple documents whenever the query is satisfied. So for the multi-option, we specify true like this. So basically, this is a query. This is an update rule. And the last part is the option inside uh, update function. So that is the yeah, sample solution for this exercise one, basically. So we can use we can simply use one update function to find those documents that we need to update by using query. And we can specify update rule. And we can use the option to update multiple documents. So that's it. So there's another operator that I want to introduce actually. So in this case, we have to utilize query to find out those documents that already has a Hong Kong inside the list, right? However, in MongoDB, actually they provide uh, this operator called the edit to set. So basically, um, I'm not sure whether you know the difference between set versus a list. So if you are familiar with a programming language like Python or other programming language like JavaScript, uh, then probably you heard about set and list. And some of you may know about the difference between two. The difference is this, the list is simply a list of element. So there can be duplicate elements inside the list. So something like this, one, one, uh, something like one, 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 two, two. Uh, this is a list. It's a list of elements and there is a duplicate element. That's okay. And set is very similar to the list, but in the set, there is no duplicate. So for example, it will be one, two. And if you try to add one inside the set, it will not be added because one already exists here. So that's the main difference between set data type and list data type. So yeah, I'm not going to talk more about this because uh, uh, that's more for the programming language. Uh, so here, yeah, basically uh, you should understand that there's a difference between these two data type. And in MongoDB, there's this operator called the add to set. Basically, if you use this operator, instead of, of the push operator, it will add this element into the list only when that element doesn't exist already. So it will consider the list as a set, basically. So basically for earlier solution that I showed you, uh, if you want to design it better, you can use this uh, edit to set operator. So for the query part, you can simply select all. So you don't need to uh, design anything on the query part. And for the update rule here, you can use add to set instead of a push operator. And you can simply specify that you are going to add a value into the visited uh, list. And the value you want to add is uh, Hong Kong, like this. And then for the option, multi should be true, this part is the same. So basically here is the query part. So we will do this operation for all the documents inside the employee collection. And here, this is the update rule. So we use add to set operator. So inside the visited list, we are going to add the Hong Kong value. However, because we are using add to set operator, Hong Kong value already exists. It will not be added. So MongoDB will take care of that. So that's it. So basically you can design uh, this query into this one. So this is much simpler and also yeah, easy to understand basically. 
So that's the add to set operator, uh, which you can utilize in the MongoDB basically. Okay, the next one is a pop operator and the pull operator. Um, so this one also, uh, if you are familiar with the programming language and if you deal with uh, a list operation a lot in the programming language, you might be familiar with this concept. So basically uh, there's also pop operator and pull operator you can utilize in MongoDB. Uh, for pop operator, you can specify pop operator and you can specify the field and you can specify the number minus one or one. So if you specify minus one, it will remove the first element from the list. So the first element from the list will be removed. If you specify number one, it will remove the last element in the list. And there's also a pool operator. So you can specify pool and field name and the element. What it does is it will remove the element you specify from the field. So if you want to remove something, you can use this uh, yeah, pure operator basically. So uh, there are two exercises of utilizing this operator. So I simply show the show you the solution again here. And you may try this at home or later uh, by yourself to save the, the time. So the first one is this. We want to remove the first element of a visited list field for all employees. So we want to simply remove first element in the visited list. Then uh, in this case, it's just simple. So we can specify DB employee collection and update to function. And first part for query for all employees. So we select everyone. Uh, in the second part, we want to remove the first element, right? Remove the first element. Then we can use the pop operator. So we specify the pop operator and on the visited a field list, we specify minus one to remove the first element. And that's it. And uh, for the option multi, we specify true so that it updates uh, yeah, all the documents that satisfy this condition and close. So that's it. And the second question here is let's remove Hong Kong from the visited list field for the employee Jane. So only for employee Jane, let's remove Hong Kong from the visited list. So when we checked it, actually she didn't go to Hong Kong, something like that. So we want to remove Hong Kong from the list. Then we can use db.employee collection and update function. Uh, for the query, we, we want to update the only document for Jane. So we specify name Jane, and then we specify pool operator. And basically on the visited field, we want to remove Hong Kong. So we specify that. Yeah, and that's it. So that's how you can utilize pop operator and the pull operator uh, in this kind of situation. So that's it. So this one is very simple. So you can try by yourself. Okay. okay. So yeah, so that's it. So basically, yeah, this is all about the uh, uh, yeah, update query that I want to introduce you. So utilizing uh, these operators, you should be able to do most of the uh, yeah, you should be able to design most of the queries.